technology has changed everything about the world uh, with one sole exception. The electric grid today is nearly identical to what it was 120 years ago. And so I like to tell the story in the book. I love this stupid TV show, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, sorry, movie. And I literally think about this, like, wouldn't it be cool to go back in time and to bring forward some of these people that invented everything we take for granted? I'm a big fan of the Wright brothers, and I would love to bring them forward only 100 years and show them a 747 or, or an F-16 and say, look at this idea that you proved that no one else thought. Everyone said powered flight was impossible, and yet the world is entirely different. I would love to go to Alexander Graham Bell and bring him forward and say, you know that thing you did? Watson, come here. I now have a thing in my hand that allows me to talk to 8 billion people within 30 seconds and access the sum total of all human knowledge instantaneously because you called Watson 100 years ago. Love to go back to the, all the variations of the uh, computer world back then uh, and bring them forward and tell them. But you know what? If I went to Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla or um, Sam Insel or George Westinghouse, what I think consider the four fathers of the electric industry, and I brought them forward to 2024, uh, they would, I would take them to a substation. I would take them to a power plant, a coal power plant, or even a gas power plant. And they would say, I, I don't get it. This is 60 hertz, high voltage transformers. This is exactly what we are doing back 120 years ago. There is literally nothing different other than there's, in some cases, instrumentation. Uh, the system is exactly what is architected. And they would be rightfully frustrated that all the other technologies, flight, computing, uh, communications, have been entirely reinvented because of technology. Their industry has remained utterly static. If this was an energy audience, I would tell you why it's remained static and tell you how we might get around it, but we're not going to get into that today because suffice to say that there are uh, electricity in the United States and most places in the world, but electricity is only one of the three remaining government-granted monopolies in the United States. Uh, it is uh, alcohol, gambling, and electricity. Those are the three you find another, find a fourth. I've challenged people. There's no fourth government granted monopolies in the United States other than alcohol, gambling, and electricity. And uh, if you look at, so I'm not going to go down this rat hole because I get very passionate about it, but if you look at all the R&D expenditures by every single industry from museums to hairdressers to microchips to doctors, um, the single lowest R&D percentage of revenue of any industry in the United States is electricity. It is lower than any other industry. And you simultaneously look at all those same industries and, and pharmaceuticals and add in every industry you can think and you index it not against R&D but against lobbying. Electric, electric industry is the number one highest percentage of its industries, highest percentage of its revenues in lobbying. And these are provocative thoughts and it's, I wouldn't be surprised if none of you have heard either of these before. Um, but in my book, it is, I, I have, I think, 300 citations, multiple citations for both of those that are really beyond question. They're, they're government bureaus and things like that. Just no one pulled these stories together uh, and told it in sort of a narrative like I did with the book. So I want to make just a point about how powerful your industry, the computer industry, is. That's a picture of my dad right there uh, in the last operating univac. They were tearing it down. Uh, he passed away many years ago, but he uh, he kind of was a bit of a nerd, not much of a nerd, but it was a bit of a nerd, and I got a little bit of my nerdism from him. And if you think back, that Univac computer was eight tons. It had 5,000 switches, vacuum tubes at the time, $10 million in current dollars, and it did 1,900 operations per second. So some people can type in calculators that fast, I think. But um, the Mac laptop, which I photoshopped in there, just to be funny, uh, 16 billion transistors, three pounds, um, 36 billion operations per second. It's, it, it, we kind of take it for granted. You know, when Gordon Moore, and I have a story about him in the book, uh, the, the inventor or the person who created Moore's Law, when he, first put, when he first said it, he wasn't trying to be prescient, omniscient about the future. He just said, I made up a crazy number and thought it might be the case in 10 years. To have imagined for decade after decade after decade, Moore's Law would continue to prove true 
was beyond his wildest dream. And there is no other industry, including energy, that will have the same degree of cost performance gains that computing has. Um, and every industry, as Mark Andreessen of Andreessen Horowitz says, becomes a computing industry, or, or as he says, software eats the world. And in the energy industries, I wrap up this presentation this morning, or this afternoon, I'm going to tell you how even the energy industry is going to become the software industry. So how do we get here? Every single energy system that you use, with a tiny few exceptions, and 10 years ago with no exceptions, were powered by fuels. Started with coal, actually wood a long time ago, and coal, uh, ultimately uh, natural gas, uh, nuclear, in the 1960s was supposed to be too cheap to, to meter. Ha! <laughs> uh, it's now one of the most expensive ways to generate electricity ever, ever invented, but it was supposed to be cheap. But every single thing has in common that it's powered by fuels. It's so intrinsic to how we think about energy that we, we don't really give it a second thought. Uh, I, I don't quote this in the book because it was a contentious statistic, but there are serious researchers that have found that one-third of the U.S. military budget is simply to protect the uh, delivery of fuel around the world and largely the United States. Um, so fuel isn't just this stuff you pull out of the ground, but it's an entire multi-trillion dollar industry on its own. Uh, and we're not even going to touch on the environmental issues because you will find, if you do read my book, I don't ever talk about the environment. This is a book about economics and business. I'm a strong, I strongly believe that renewable energy will... Uh, save the future of the planet, but a lot of people don't believe that, and so I didn't touch on it because I didn't want people to mistake my motivation for writing the book as some kind of save the planet. This is a run better business, make more money book. So again, depending on where you, what you read and, and how your worldview comes together, uh, it's pretty inevitable that renewable energy Sorry, it's very clear that renewable energy is catching on very quickly. It's extraordinarily inexpensive. We'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. Uh, its low cost is broadly overlooked for a variety of reasons. But I think that the shift is inevitable. Uh, in last 2023, we put up twice as much renewable energy as all renewable energy built in the, all the years before. So renewable energy is absolutely taking off. It's almost all solar, by the way. And you'll, by the end of today, you'll know why. But the thing that Everybody misses is this simple fact. And if you remember only one thing today about our energy system is that solar and batteries, which are powering the future of the world's energy systems, are technologies. They're not fuels. This is a step change of the highest order. This is a way bigger step from analog to digital, digital computing. This is as profound as it gets because the economics for 150 years on all energy systems are based on the procurement and distribution of fuel. For the first time ever, we have energy systems that do not create, do not generate fuel. And more, much more importantly, I sorry, do not require fuel. You might also put um, geothermal and wind in that category, but those are not technologies. And, and there's technologies at them, but ultimately they're giant power plants, which have to bear some of the same economic challenges as a coal plant. Doesn't have the same environmental damage, thank goodness, but it's, uh, it's still a giant, expensive, slow thing to build. 